Hey guys and girls, me again. So I'm gonna say, I'm gonna do a little uh, update on my uh, World Camera collection. I just got a nice reproduction set of German uh, Liebermonster camouflage. For those of you who don't know what Liebermonster is, it is the very last, the absolute last pattern that the uh, Waffen SS ever or the German war machine ever made for their troops. Now, um, there's only been a few examples actually found in existence over the years. Here are a few out of my SS book. You can see that, and I don't know if you can. But that is the last war pattern ever made by the Germans. Um, <clears throat> now, these examples in this book are completely faded out. So they don't do it justice to what it really looked like. But it was actually the Germans' attempt to uh, defeat their own infrared systems. Which, of course, if any you know anything about German armor development and their war machine, yes, they were the first to develop an infrared system. And this camouflage... This is was donated to my collection by Kurt Eberling Jr. Um, he's a World War II collector and uh, does living history and such. But he bought this pattern from a friend of his who makes these. And uh, he wanted an actual brand new pair that wasn't faded. The guy sent him this pair. So he didn't like it. He sent it to me. I take any donations. But anyway, this is an absolute correct uh, reproduction of Lee Monster. Slightly faded. It would be a little bit brighter. And this is what came after. This is what the Swiss did to this same pattern. This is the identical pattern as this. The only thing the Swiss did was make it their own. Their own cut, their own style. And of course they produced it 48 years later and this is another set this is from the Switzerland too this is Alpenflage Liebermonster Alpenflage same pattern it's just this is brighter and they use better uh, dyes and such plus this hasn't been through the dryer a million times now <clears throat> this is an exact this is the only way that they produced this, from what we understand from my reading here in this book. They only produced it in two styles. The short-waisted jacket. Uh, they, they did make helmet covers and 43 caps, but they're very, very, very rare. Uh, I do believe these were produced in Dachau. But it's got the metal buttons. It's even got the suspension hooks on the side for your belt. And your epaulet, you know, your epaulet stuff up here on the top for your rank. These are the pants, the trousers. And, of course, they got the steel dish buttons, the tapered uh, adjustments on the side. Watch pocket on the front. And it has uh, fasteners here for your suspenders, if you wanted to. But by the end of the war, they weren't wearing suspenders. This is the pants. So that's the Leva Monster. I'm going to get you off the tripod here and I'll show you a couple others. Now we get into the archives here. Alright, let's see what we got. This of course is a 44 dot set. And there's the pants. Now it has all correct I actually have uh actually 1940s buttons and reproduced uh, rank for a captain and I have my original Hitler youth belt from 1939 this is an oak leaf a model one schmock as you can see it has the uh, slits in here for your to get your equipment because that was supposed to be worn over all your gear.
course, that's the summer side, and then there's the brown side. It reverse, fully reverses to the brown side. And there is an oak leaf B jump schmock SS. It's brown on the inside. Of course, this part, all the big tan areas are pockets. But that's absolutely correct. It's made by Miltech. They did a great job reproducing that uh, Zell, uh, jump schmock. It's got zippers here. This is a pocket. That's a pocket. These are big pockets here. Even has the correct zippers on it. They did a good job. Uh, so that's just a, you know, quickie. And then this is a splinter A pattern. Actually, I think this is a B pattern. This is the B pattern, Luftwaffe jump schmock. And it has the blue glass buttons and the embroidered eagle onto the a piece of material and then onto the jacket. And this was for, uh, used mainly in the Mediterranean. You probably used it a lot in uh, the late war in Normandy and stuff like that. But that was a good pickup. So, uh, there's just a few. There's Oak Leaf B. I mean, uh, Splinter B. Oak Leaf B. Oak Leaf A. 44 dot. And now, the famous, very rare, Lieber Monster, which is actually some pretty effective camouflage. And of course, I have my hats over here. My reversible Oak Leaf B hat. A 44 dot hat with the the gold eagle, uh, skull on it, and my reproduction officer's cap. So uh, I had a few people telling me I did a video about a helmet that I had, not this one, but another one, and I also have a uh, splinter A pattern cover on a Falsham Jaeger helmet. Of course, reproduction. I don't have $12,000 for a real helmet. But, uh, I had some somebody write to me and tell me to why don't you read some books and do your homework? Only thing I gotta say to them is read it. Read it. Read it. Read it. Read them all read them all and that's just some of the stuff that I've read okay so don't tell me I don't know what I'm talking about I've collected read been different places talk with more collectors re interacted with real veterans from World War II because I worked for a German guy for four years at a Porsche shop that was in the Hitler Youth and got actually won the Iron Cross and was face to face with Hitler so don't tell me I don't know what I'm talking about. Okay? I do this to entertain people and to enlighten them. And if they see something like this at a, at a flea market, buy it. This is the, If you found a set of this at a flea market, it's priceless. Priceless. You could, you could museum couldn't give you enough money for it. So uh, keep your eyes peeled. Keep watching. And I hope you learned something.